I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. I'm really happy tonight to introduce Tara Savolka to you and uh, hear her story. It's a wonderful story mm, and uh, I'm excited to hear your, what you have to tell us. So uh, you were born and raised in the church, is that right? Yes, that's correct. I am <laughs> about fifth generation, I think, on both sides mostly. Wow. Where so. was that at? Um, I was born and raised in Provo, Utah, where okay. BYU is. Yeah. yeah. And just uh, normal, active Mormon life, was it? Yeah, I mean, we pretty much were the typical Mormon family. We yeah. had my mom and dad and five kids and wow. big Mormon family and yeah. very active in the church all growing up. Yeah. And mom and so. dad married in the temple? Mom and dad married in the temple. Yeah. Dad went on a mission. Wow. Yeah. So okay. they, I don't know if they met at BYU, but they both went to BYU. Oh, so, yeah. Yep. Your mom actually taught at BYU, I She understand. did, yes, she did teach at BYU. Wow. Off and on when I was a kid, she taught um, part-time, and what then she, she taught full-time. Journalism. Wow. Yeah. I guess that was uh, interesting. She probably met a lot of people there at BYU. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you just got baptized at eight? And yep, got baptized at eight. And Grew up and, you know, never really questioned anything, because that's yeah. what all my peers were doing, and yeah. there, I didn't really know anybody else that wasn't and doing that, that yeah, yeah, and more in Provo. That how long yeah. did you live there? I lived there from the time I was born until I was uh, 16 years old. Oh, okay. so yeah. So and you took seminary, did you? I did. I took seminary. I took three years. My senior year, I kind of started um, other things to doing to other do. things. Yeah. Yes. So well, I think any more three years as a graduate. Uh, so I didn't um, actually get like a certificate, certificate. or anything, but I well, went through it. Well, they do that now, I think. Do it they? have to be four years yeah. as, uh, as it used to be or something, but yeah. a three-year graduate. Anyway, any questions ever come up about the church? You? No. I mean, the whole time I lived here, I pretty much thought, you know, I was raised that it was the only true church, that yeah. it was the best, and that, you know, Joseph Smith had restored this gospel, and yeah. we were so privileged to have it, and I never really questioned it. I just kind of went along with the program. Um, most of the time until I was 15 and my life kind of got um, completely changed so and, what, and uh, that's when when I was 15 my father was killed in an accident oh. and that's when um, that's kind of when all the questions started coming um, not so much about Mormonism but more about God like who is this God that would take Take my my dad. dad and very well-meaning Mormons would say to me, "Well, God must have really needed your dad." And I would think, <laughs> "What kind of God needs my dad more than me? Like that doesn't sound right." So just very angry at God. Not oh. so much Mormonism. Did so. that last very long? It did. I pretty much it kind of started slowly. Um, I started kind of pulling away from the church and from um, just Mormonism and everything that God. I didn't really want much to do with God. I felt oh. like if he kind of betrayed us in a way, and yeah. we no longer had this priesthood leader in our home, and oh our house wasn't complete anymore. There was something missing, so I was probably more angry at God in the beginning, yeah. um, more than anything. How did so. your mom take this, and how, what did she share with you? Well, my mom is just, 
it's, I have to understand my mom, she's not a very emotional person. She never was, she's not a very affectionate person. She's a very matter of fact person. Um, so she pretty much sat us all down and said, okay, we're not gonna let this ruin the rest of our lives, move forward, mm -hmm. um, don't ever say this ruins your lives. And so we never s had counseling or anything like that. We just kind of went on with our lives. But inside mm -hmm. I was just, a, I was a mess. I was totally yeah, a mess. Probably the same with the other oh, family members Oh, I think members all of too. my siblings were just kind of dealing with it in their own way and oh. were struggling with issues yeah. that they had at that point, so. Wow. So you end up leaving high school and, or not finish, I mean, finishing high school and then what happened? Yes, yeah, so you? my senior year we moved up to Brigham City and oh, okay. um, so I finished out the year there and um, at that point I was like, I want nothing to do with God, I want nothing to do with religion, I'm just gonna go do my own thing. Maybe one day I'll get my act together had that in the back of my head. I'll get my act together. Marrying the temple. Yeah, and I'll go back and I'll, you know, I'll go back and I'll be yeah. worthy and I'll yeah. do all the things I need to do. But right now I just want to live for me. I want to just enjoy my life and that's pretty much what I did. Do you so. think there are other Latter-day Saints that experience that same kind of thing after high school especially? Yeah, I think so. I think it's, yeah. I think it's pretty common to just kind of, um, yeah. especially when you've been raised in the culture that that's all there is and so yeah. you're just kind of like, Huh, I wonder, you know, what else is out there, and yeah. um, that was definitely. And we really don't know much beyond yeah. the church yeah. at that point, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you just go to school then? Did you? Yeah. Go on so to school? I um, actually moved to Louisiana oh. for a short time. Wow. And um, I actually was married before, and uh -huh. um, I married right out of high school. Okay. Um, because I was in this total rebellion phase, and so <laughs> I didn't want to do anything. He was not LDS, so we got married. We had a little girl, Maddie, and um, we moved. He was in the military, so we moved out of state, and that was like my first time being away from Utah. Wow. So was that disappointing to your mom that you were marrying a? non-member um yeah i think so but she was just my life was spiraling out of control so she was there was not much she could do at that point i really? think she was just kind of like oh these kids i don't know what i'm going to do <laughs> so well how did you feel inside did you feel like you were spiraling out of control or did you feel I like you had like it I all had, together no i definitely felt like i was not grounded there was something okay. missing um I was still struggling with issues of God, like does he exist? Yeah. If he does, why would he you know, do this to my family? I think the getting married so young was filling that void for my dad being gone and trying to find some yeah. fix there, so that wasn't an easy way. Well, I don't want to put this really on Mormonism necessarily, but do you think that, I mean obviously losing your dad so young would be traumatic and everything, but should the church be, <laughs> I don't know how to say this, should the church be developing a better relationship with, with God, with you? Should you have had a better relationship from yeah, the church? I from mean, the church, um, well, obviously looking back Or now, does youth play into this too? I think there's some youth that plays into it. Um, yeah. The church actually, you know, nobody ever offended me or was rude no. or like, um, they're very kind, um, but just the way it's structured, right? It's the yeah. priest or the leader of your family. I mean, so it's just the natural way of it when you don't fit into that, when you're, your family doesn't you no longer that, fits into yeah. that, you just kind of, where am I? And yeah. um, not that they were, like I said, they were never unkind or cruel or, I mean, they were very well-meaning, yeah. um, trying to, the people of the church, yeah. but just the doctrines, you know, it's like, wait, we don't have a priesthood leader. So that was a struggle for me, definitely. Wow, now your mom remarries. Yes, in the temple. Did. In the temple for a time. For time only. For time only. Which and I don't up, know if everybody knows that that's possible, yes. but they do. And that brought up some questions. That brought up a lot of questions because I didn't understand because time and all eternity. For the first. For the fir for, for my for dad. dad. Yeah. Um, I don't understand how like, oops, but we're going to like pause that eternity for a minute and let you marry for time again. Um, although I actually didn't have a problem. I wanted my mom to be happy. I wanted her sure. to have a husband that um, would love her and care for her. And I didn't want her, she was 39, I think, or 38 when my father passed away. Mm -hmm. So I thought she was still young. I didn't want her to spend the rest of her life alone yeah. here on earth. So, um, but I did think that was a little odd. Like, <laughs> hmm, okay, eternal marriage kind of okay. doesn't work out great. If, How does that temple thing work? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, if you have a spouse die when you're young, so yeah. yeah. Well, what else happens then in life for you? Well, so, well, at that point too, um, when I was, when my dad had passed away and I was kind of struggling with these questions and I pretty much went into a rebellious phase and trying yeah. to figure out what was going on. And I ended up in Dallas, okay. um, Dallas, Texas. Wow. And um, that's kind of where I think God really started pursuing me. I mean, he was pursuing me my whole life, but. Um, now that you look back. Yeah, now that I look see, back yeah. and I can see just little, <laughs> little things here and there. But um, 
that's when like I was first introduced to like the Christian gospel, which was just what happened? Well, so I had a friend who worked next to me, and she was um, she was this Christian girl, and she found out I was Mormon, yeah. so she had all these questions, and I was not a faithful Mormon at the time, but I thought, this is great. I could bring her to church. Your you know? thought was to convert oh, her yeah, to the church. Oh, yeah, for sure, <laughs> even though I wasn't active and yeah, I wasn't isn't faithful. That funny? But, yeah. but I thought, you know, I thought one day I'll be good enough. I can go back. I can clean myself well, let's up. Let's bring I her can, into it, yeah, too. Yeah, bring <laughs> her in. Maybe if I get her in, I'll be, you know, right with the Mormon church. And, um, I actually just, she invited me to her church, and I was like, okay, yeah, sure. So I went, and the first sermon I ever heard was um, throw away the list and trust Christ, have a relationship with Christ. And part of me was like, they can't say that. The list is Shocking, important. Huh? What would you do without the list? You would just be terrible. <laughs> so um, that's when I, but it, it was intriguing to me because this whole relationship piece, I was not raised with um Relation. being taught about a relationship with Christ yeah. at all. So, I mean, we don't he pray to Christ. He was just our elder he's, brother. Yeah, he's our elder brother and, you know, died on the cross for us. Yeah, stuff. but he's not somebody, I guess I wasn't really worship, worshipful towards him or I wasn't worshiping him. So, no. um, and they were worshiping him and that was just a very foreign thing. Singing songs. Singing songs to Jesus and, and praising him and yeah. people raising their hands. And I was like, what is this? Like, I've never <laughs> been in a place like this. It's kind of weird. But um, it was just really neat. It was all about Jesus. And I just couldn't believe that. I'm like, this is all about Jesus. Wait, I'm from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but this, all these Christians ever talk about is Jesus all the time. <laughs> so so did you start thinking, well, is there something wrong here or there? Or what did you no, think? No, I, I thought I was a Christian. I was like, I'm a Christian, right? I believe in Mormons Jesus. Because Mormons think we're, yeah, you know, Yeah, we're Christian. Christian. You know, I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for my sins. And I kind of... Um, came to the conclusion that, yeah, you know, we're just in, in like another denomination or um, something like that. But then I had a very wise friend who, when I was explaining to him, I was just from a different de denomination. He yeah. said, no, <gasps> it's not, it's not Christianity. And I said, he of course it is. To tell you. He didn't know a whole lot, but he asked me, he said, well, don't you believe Jesus and Satan are brothers? Well, yeah, everybody believes yeah, that. Everybody. And he said, no, we do not believe that. And I was like, what? And so that just got me kind of, oh, wow, they, they believe totally different things about God. Because, um, yeah, Jesus is my older brother. He's not, yeah. you know, God over all the time. We found out Christians don't think that. Yeah, too. that yeah. was, and they worship Jesus, and they yeah. have a relationship with Jesus. And this was, these were things that I didn't do growing up, not at least not in my well, we Mormon didn't either. community. No, so, no yeah. that's true. So, wow. Yeah. So it did, you know, it's just funny that those of us that have come out of the church, see Jesus differently now. Everybody mm -hmm. that's ever been interviewed on this show, I think, has, all, has said there is something different about a Christian Jesus. And, and these are people, all of us that have been Mormon before, mm -hmm. we know this difference. Yes. Uh, can we articulate that a little bit? <laughs> what is? Um, well, for me personally, as a Mormon, you know, the Church of Jesus Christ, yeah. um, I didn't have that personal relationship with Christ. I didn't have that... Um, freedom in Christ. I hesitate to yeah. use that word because Mormons think that means you just do whatever, but um, I didn't have joy in Christ. That was one of the biggest things um, when yeah. I... Was it part of it because we're doing our own work? We are. Is that it's, part of it? It's based on your worthiness. Yeah. And, um, and what you've done and lately what, yeah. and what you're doing to work up the ladder. Yeah. So you either can get kind of an attitude of pride, like look at all my good works, or you can start to feel defeated. And that's yeah. kind of, I would do this pendulum swing from one to the next. I'd say, oh, look at all these good works. I'm doing so well. I'm reading my Book of Mormon. And then, you know, something would come along. Oh, I'm bad. I'm terrible. <laughs> yeah. I'm never going to live up to this. I'm not, I'm you know. I'm a sinner. Yeah, yeah, I'm terrible. And I, I, I didn't like the word sinner. Mormons yeah. don't like, I no, didn't like that as a Mormon. I would never use the word they sinner. They just say we're not perfect. Yeah, we're not perfect, <laughs> right? Like sinner was, yeah, you were not allowed to say sinner. You didn't want to say that. But you yeah. knew what you were inside, yeah. you know. So that was hard. Um, so when you went to this Christian church, did uh, did that soften your heart toward God at all when you were? Uh, a little bit. I, at that point, too, God was kind of um, showing me, like, uh, that He was still working in my life. I'm, I'm here. Yeah, and yeah. He was He was going to be there for me. And wow. He, um, I went through some rough times, and God, I, sometimes I was upset because, like, my family wasn't there, or my mom wasn't there, and but now I see like God was there. And so yeah. he, he allowed me to have those situations to have kind of um, 
people in my life that wouldn't come and pick up the pieces because wow. he was the one that was going to do it, you know. So, yeah. so how long were you in Dallas? I was in Dallas for ten years. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, for ten You're years. You're working there, and yep, I was working and yeah. going to school. I graduated from University of Texas at Dallas. So, oh wow. Yeah. And you graduated in. 2008. 2008. So well, good. Took for me you. a long time. Yeah. I, I was I'm a single mom most of that time, so That's rough, isn't that was it? tough. But and, and, um, and you kept going to a Christian church. I kept then? going to a Christian church. So um, while I was going to the Christian church, and I was still kind of you know going to the Mormon church, and my friend had told me that, and then I went through a really rough period in my life, and I actually called him up and said, "Hey, I'm just really struggling right now," and he said, "Hey, I think you should check out this church thing." So I went and just. It just amazed me, and God just really worked in my heart. And wow. um, finally, I was like, I want Jesus. I don't know what these Christians are always going on and on about Jesus, and I want him. Whatever I have to do, where's the paper going to sign? You know, yeah. what, I, <laughs> what do I have to do? Yeah, I asked my friend. I called Becca up, and I said, Okay, can I come over and talk about becoming a Christian? And I thought for sure I was going to have to do an interview with a pastor or something, and I was going to have to give why I was, you know, <laughs> worthy to be a, a Christian. And she was like, no, you just need to acknowledge you're a sinner and ask Christ into your life. And I was like, wow. That, and you did that? I did that with her. So that night I did that with her and kind of walked away like, okay, cool, you know, big deal. And then the next day she sent me this long email welcoming me to the family of God. And I'm like, wow, this is a big deal. I didn't realize what I was signing up for. Becoming a child of God. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is kind of a big deal. I'm like, well, I better take this seriously. You know, I got it. So I started kind of, you know, following and yeah listening to things and did you ever talk to a bishop or anybody when you were kind uh, of thinking ask about Christ or anything did that come up no at all? not really no. I didn't really I I had a hard time with um, not that I didn't like my bishops but it was yeah. hard because they had full-time jobs so they weren't like meant to like oh. counsel or pastor me at least I didn't feel that way yeah. so I didn't ever you know reach out to them in that way okay. because it just didn't I don't know, it just didn't seem, just didn't seem like a natural. I, I, to me, growing up, and this is not for every Mormon, I know for sure, but for me, the bishop was someone you went to when you got into a lot of trouble. Yeah. Or in order to tell him you were good to go to the temple. I did go do baptisms for the dead in the temple, so you know, oh. I had to go do okay. my bishop's interview for that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I didn't, I guess I personally didn't look at the bishop as like a counselor to counsel me or give me advice uh -huh. or anything. He was more of like an authoritative figure that sure. was going to lay out the law for me. And yeah. like, so yeah, I was scared to go to the bishop, especially if my mom found out, you know, I don't want to go to the bishop and my mom finds out. Why were you talking to the bishop? What did yeah. you do? You know, so. Well, I know you eventually leave Dallas because you're here. Yes, so yes, what, how do you get to, uh, and you're, and so, you're yeah, so after I became a Christian, I met my husband, Rob, and he was, you know, doing ministry to Mormons. That's actually how we met. So I always tell my Christian friends looking for their husband, you know, hey, follow <laughs> God. He'll take him to you. <laughs> so we met through his ministry, and um, he was actually in California at the time and was working on his Ph.D., and I said, um, he said, I want to move back to Utah and work there full time and be a missionary. And I said, never going to happen. I don't want to be back I don't want to go back to Utah. I'm very comfortable in the Bible Belt. This is great. I love it. You know, this is but wonderful. But you said he was cute or something. He was right? cute. He was <laughs> and cute. And persuasive, yes, maybe? Yes, <laughs> very persuasive. But we got married and we stayed in Dallas for a couple of years. And I just said, let's just, you know, he said, let's see what God does. And God kept giving me a heart to move out here, which was really hard. I kind of came with my heels sticking in. Yeah. I don't want to live there. I want to stay. I want to stay in my comfortable Dallas. So wow, that was definitely hard. But you eventually do come. And I do come, and, and I, well, I'm not going to lie. It was a rough couple of years. It was rough being here, yeah. being an ex-Mormon and being in Utah. My heart broke for the Mormon people to see my family um, working so hard and to see um, to attain something that Jesus already did on the cross. That was really hard yeah, for me. Let, let's explore that a little yeah. bit. What? Uh, what about this works and grace? What what do the Mormons not understand here? <laughs> um, well, when I talk to a Mormon usually, and I talk to a lot of them, um, and not all of them, but a lot, um, when they describe it to me, and probably how I would have described it is, you know, Jesus like opened the door, but you still have to climb the ladder. My mom gave me that illustration once. She yeah. said, you know, Jesus is like the ladder, but you still have to climb it. And so they're still climbing it. But um, as a Christian, I believe like he did it all on the cross. When yeah. he said, it is finished, it was finished. It was finished. There was nothing else that we needed to do. Yeah. Um, so it, I'm just thankful that I now live in that reality and that and truth. I, I love the symbolism of the veil in the temple yeah. being torn 
taking away the what used to be between the high priest and the people and God mm -hmm. and all that that uh, the veil's torn and so now we do have this uh, personal relationship with Christ that's yeah. special isn't it yeah so the Bible does that mean anything different to you now oh, I love the Bible I love God's Word and um, how is that as a Mormon as a Mormon like I was always told that there were all these problems with the Bible Right, and even in seminary, we read the Bible, but they were very like loose with the Bible. I guess it was yeah. like you know, I, I'm still trying to remember how we got through the whole "there's no marriage in heaven" passage in the Bible through seminary. Yeah, like, how did they explain that one away? I don't remember. Marriage I, isn't given in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at the time, but they would tell you there's all these problems. Oh, I can't trust the Bible. Can't trust the Bible. In fact, a lot of my atheist and agnostic family still say that they still have this Mormon view of the Bible, and I'm like. Okay, that's not really accurate, no, but you can, you can trust. Yeah, it. you can trust it. There's you can go back to the old manuscripts and look and see yeah. the variations, and there's not a lot of variation. But I couldn't I couldn't tell you what was wrong with the Bible as a Mormon, but I just knew there was something wrong. But now as a Christian, and knowing that we can go back to the earlier manuscripts and look at yeah. the difference um, and see that there is very little difference. It's usually in spelling the word yeah. the way a word is spelled or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just neat how God's preserved his word. Like he said he would. He said he would preserve his I word. I know it. And we have such a, a different perspective of the Bible and Jesus that we ever had as, as Mormons. Yes. And I don't know how to explain that other than when we were Mormon we were blind. Yeah. Both to what the Bible had to offer and who Jesus was. Yeah. And you've obviously felt the same way. Yeah, I think I thought I, I had bought so much into like the institution of it, and it was so great because of the family values and all these you know wonderful things. The whole relationship piece was just totally missing, that's and that, to and that's about. what I see um, with my family. It's really yeah. hard. Um, how, how have they reacted? Are you so, able to share it all? Well, my my mom at first was happy that I was going to a Christian church because I was no longer going out and doing my own thing. Oh, okay. I was trying to get religion. Please. But then when I told her I was getting baptized, that's when she was not happy with me um, and got very upset about that and said, you've, you've already been baptized, been baptized Mormon. Mormon. But if uh, any other denomination would come out and become a Mormon, they'd have to be baptized again yeah. into the Mormonism. So, um, but that's kind of when I told her, and I didn't get a very favorable response for sure. And, and nobody's ever asked you any questions, or have they asked you any questions? Uh, not really. No. Um, like my extended family, aunts and uncles and cousins, they I, I've been kind of labeled as like the crazy Christian or the, <laughs> the Jesus lover, or, which I'm fine with those labels. That's fine. You Isn't know? that so, funny though? Yeah, it is. It is pretty funny. And, so. And, you know, I, I felt like I developed such a, a, not, a, a, a not a respect, but, uh, you know, having been a bishop and having lived a good life in Mormonism for all those years, and I just haven't had very many people come up to me and ask me or s s say, well, what did you find? Yeah. You know, what have you learned? Yeah, they, just, yeah, they don't, they don't really want to know why. They, no. a, lot, a lot of assumptions are made, and yeah. so I haven't well, really gotten a lot of questions why. More so, hey, we want you to come back, you know, or, or something like that. What, but no. what kind of questions do you get? I know you're active with Rob in, in, in um, ministry and everything. And usually why we do what we do. Yeah. Like, why can't we just leave the Mormon people alone, let them be happy, get a lot of that. Um, it's because I love them. I want them to have freedom in Christ like I have. I want them to have joy in Christ. I see so many Mormons without joy, the joy of Christ. I mean, they, he's yeah. not in them. And so I, I want them to have that. I want them to have that so badly. And, and the duty and the burden that seems yeah. to come along with the checklist you yeah. talk about doing mm -hmm. stuff and feeling like you've got to be doing more and more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It just it breaks my heart for them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, any of your family? Uh, well, you, you've said that they didn't really ask you questions, but they uh, some are actually atheist or agnostic. Yes, they or something. would classify yeah. themselves as that. But I do yeah. have one family member who has recently received Christ. Oh, so oh, I'll let excellent. that person on their terms, you know, let the family <laughs> know. But that's been like total answer to prayer. And yeah. I have hopes that many more will come out. Yeah. I think I've got cousins with lots of questions. I've got aunts and uncles with lots of questions, um, lots of doubts. and. I pray for them, and yeah. I just think God's going to open their eyes. I we have a, we serve an amazing God. He is so big. He is so awesome. Yeah. He can pull anyone out. Even my mom, who's devout, who I think you know, people <laughs> tell me all the time on my atheist family or my you know Mormon family will say, "Oh, just leave mom alone. She's never coming." I'm like, 
my God's big enough. He can he even can bring take, my He can take care my of mom. that. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I pray for because well, I want to be with her. And we pray for that too, that our family will, some somebody will come into their lives or some scripture mm -hmm. because it happened to us. Yeah. Right? I mean, if it can happen to us, it can happen to them. And, yeah. 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 So has it been worth it? Oh, totally worth it. Yeah. Jesus is awesome. I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. I mean, I, I just wish I would have listened to God a little earlier, <laughs> you know. Not gone through the <laughs> Yeah, not trials. gone through, but he allowed me to go through it. And so for that, I'm thankful. And when and you look back, it kind of, uh, you see God's hand in I totally in your see life. God's hand in that. Yeah. And yeah, and it's just been awesome. So. Well, there's just a minute or two left. What okay. would you say to the Latter-day Saints if you had a, you've got a moment to say something yeah. to them? <laughs> I would just say that I love them, that um, I want them to have the freedom in Christ. Um, I want them their works to be out of a love for God, not out of a yeah, trying to earn something. Yeah. Um, and just that God loves them and they can have joy. They can know um, an amazing God that they don't know right now. And so I just pray for them that they would <laughs> seek out the true Lord. And, and, and I don't think they understand that Christians have a life. That, yeah. I mean, your children go to, to enjoy going to church, oh, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, my little you were talking about your little one. Oh, she, my four-year-old loves to tell everybody about Jesus. She's like, "Do you know Jesus?" She goes around asking people if they know Jesus. And you were saying something about the firemen or something. Oh yeah, so, so I, I wasn't there, but I know she was doing some witnessing at the fire station when she went there. So my friend told and me, asking oh. all the yeah, asking them if they were, you know, if they knew know Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> and, but that's common, you know. We go to the playground and she's telling yeah. the kids, "Hey." Did you know God is so awesome? He's so big, he can do anything. Jesus, she <laughs> so, says that. Yeah, she said that we were at a splash park and she assumed these girls were Christian because they were playing with our group of friends. And so she was telling them all about Jesus and wow. God and how he's so big and he can do anything. So, yeah. Well, I do think that's a problem in Mormonism. We're so narrow-minded or so focused in what we do that we don't realize that they have youth programs. And, yeah. and you actually teach. Uh, I do, I teach pre-K and pre kindergarten class. Yeah. I love those kids. They are so cute and so funny. They're, and they praise Jesus. Oh, they praise Jesus. They love to dance. They love to dance. So we put on our worship music and they dance. At first I was like, no, you guys can't do that. And then the worship leader said- Sacrilegious? Yeah, I, was, I, I don't know why I thought that that was not reverent. I mean, in my head, I mean, I praise the Lord. I raise my hand sometimes, yeah. but I was like, they can't dance. And she was like, oh, let them dance, you know? And they dance, they love it. They love going to church. They love oh. praising God. They just have fun, so. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's just so wonderful to have, I guess the better word to say, or the way to say it is have our eyes open and yes. see things differently. Jesus, the Bible, and your prayers are a little different now than they probably used to be. Oh yeah, it's like I'm talking to a friend now. It's not so much a... Isn't that joyful? Yeah, it's awesome. All he's done for us. Well, yeah. Tara, thanks so much for coming. Well, thank you for having me. Such a delightful lady. And I know you've got uh, so many activities going on in your life <laughs> yeah. with, with Christians and with your husband and everything. Yeah. So we wish you well. Thank you. And it's nice to visit with you. Yeah. We appreciate you watching tonight. And please remember your following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Good night.